In this last session, I'm going to cover a couple commonly used scales in marketing research. Some of these might sound familiar to you. The Likert scale is actually very often used, so let's start with that one. A Likert scale allows respondents to indicate to what extent they agree or disagree with a certain statement, and usually that scale is symmetrical with a middle point. So think of, for example, a five-point scale or a seven-point scale instead of a four or a six-point scale. So statements could be posed in the I format. So I enjoy competitive sport activities. Winning is important to me. I need physical activity often. My health depends on being active and so on. Each of these statements is measured in the I form. So really asked as a statement, not as a question. And then respondents can indicate to what extent they feel it applies to them. So strongly disagree or strongly agree. What you can see in this example here, particularly with the strongly disagree and strongly agree five point scale, is that the way it's asked right here, strongly agree is on the left and strongly disagree is on the right. I'm not a fan of that at all. I insert this example so I can have a reason to tell you how not to do it. It makes much more sense to put strongly disagree on the left side and then strongly agree on the right side and basically flip the scale symmetrically from left to right turn it around, reverse it, because it just makes way more sense to have a higher number, one, two, three, four, five, be associated with more agreement than with less agreement. So intuitively, it just makes way more sense to put the positive or the higher item on the right and the lower or the, the, the least agreement on the left. So keep that in mind as well for your survey. Secondly, a lifestyle inventory scale is a specific application of the Likert scale that measures people's attitudes, interests, and opinions towards lifestyle, work, leisure, purchases, and so on. So it basically paints a life, lifestyle sketch or lifestyle portrait of people. For example, I love a lot of variety in my life. I like to make things I can use every day. I follow the latest trends and fashions and so on. Again, asking on a scale from very much disagree to very much agree. Two flaws right here with the example that I show is that, again, the scale should be flipped with mostly disagree on the left and mostly agree on the right, because that just makes more sense. And then also, I'm not a fan of not leaving a middle option. I prefer that you use a five point scale or a seven point scale, because this way people can pick a middle ground. Sometimes people don't want to choose sides, people just don't feel like leaning towards positive or negative. People truly feel in the middle about something. So in that case, if you give people a four point scale, you're forcing them to pick sides, which is usually not a good thing. You want to allow people to answer the way um, they truly feel. So having that middle ground, so having a symmetrical five point scale or seven point scale is a better way to go. A semantic differential scale is also sometimes called a bipolar scale. And I briefly mentioned bipolar scales already in the previous session. So bipolar adjectives are placed on either side of a continuum to allow respondents to indicate to what extent they lean towards the left side. So the uh, adjective on the left versus the one on the right. And these are always polar opposites of one another. Think of uncaring versus caring, unsympathetic versus sympathetic, unconcerned versus concerned. And again, the options you leave in the middle are usually uneven. So you want to allow for middle ground so that people can indicate to what extent they lean towards the left or the right or stick in the middle. And then there's a bunch of different versions of the same thing. There's the staple scale, which goes below zero. There's graphic rating scales, like I said, that are usually used for kids. There's itemized rating scales, um, percentage scales and so on. So you can basically form variations on that idea. Now, two more concepts that I want to explain before you um, end this uh, online class is scale reliability and scale validity. Scale reliability means that you're wondering whether respondents truly answered similarly or, or consistently to nearly identical questions. So in other words, across different questions that measure a similar thing, are people being consistent? Is this measurement reliable? Think of, for example, health consciousness. If you want to know whether people are health conscious overall, you probably want to ask that in multiple questions and not just one question, because one question can just kind of like miss the point, uh, may not be formulated well. So it's usually more robust if you ask several different questions that pertain to the same underlying latent construct. So for example, I monitor my health. I think health is important. 
I'm not too preoccupied with my health. Each of these measures health consciousness, but you can probably tell that the last one, the third one, is reversed. It says, I'm not too preoccupied with my health. It basically states the opposite of the first two measures. I monitor my health and I think my health is important. So let's say, for example, if you are considering yourself a pretty health conscious person, you will probably answer fairly high on that first item. You will say, yeah, I mostly dis I mostly agree. I, I pretty much monitor my health, yes. I think health is important, absolutely. You give yourself a seven on that scale, uh, being strongly agree. And then I'm not too preoccupied with my health. If you are paying attention and you're actually as a respondent reading this statement well, you will notice that it's flipped, that it's in the reversed or opposite direction. So in that case, you would answer low, you would give yourself a one because you are occupied with your health. So it does actually generate the opposite score. However, sometimes respondents are not paying attention and give themselves a seven just because they're going on autopilot, filling in um, on the right side because they think, oh, I'm health conscious, so I'm just gonna check kind of like the, the, the right side of each of these items um, without properly reading each statement. So this generates a very low reliability across these different measures for the health consciousness scale. So this is something we measure using Chromebox Alpha. That's a way in, in uh, SPSS to measure the reliability of a scale. And I will show you how to use Chromebox Alpha when we get to the analysis. For now, the most important thing is that you understand what scale reliability means. Another item is scale validity. And scale validity really means, hey, the question that we're asking here, is it even relevant? Does it really measure what it intends to measure? So this pertains to that question within itself. For example, again, the health consciousness scale, you have several different items measuring health consciousness, but what if one of them measures, I like to go to the movies? That's totally irrelevant. That, that doesn't measure, measure health consciousness. So that just doesn't, I mean, mean anything. It has very low validity. Is it a valid question to measure what you want to measure? Nope. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So face validity means that you as a researcher and along with your research team, which is your group, you're going to be checking each question for relevance, for validity. Is it truly capturing what it's trying to capture? In other words, if respondents answer this question the way it's asked right here, will it generate the answer that we need, that we want, that we're looking for? So this is something to keep in mind as well.